Ciao. I'm Mariana Esposito. The next time on Ciao Italia, the magic of vegetables. with food? So do I. And today I want to show you something a little different, a little out of the ordinary of just Italian cooking. Because today we're going to do something called East Meets West. And we're going to start with bok choy. And most of you know that as an Asian vegetable. It belongs to the cabbage family. And it's got a very nice mild flavor. But in this instance, I think it really goes well with some really great Italian ingredients. I'm going to show you what those are. So you want to go to the store and buy yourself some really nice looking baby bok choy. So baby bok choy are the shorter version of this. But if you couldn't get tiny baby bok choy, you could always use just regular bok choy. So what you want to do is wash it. And then I just cut it down the center, right through the core, leaving everything just like that. So we're going to cook the whole thing. So just cut them right through the center, just like that. And if you see any dirt inside, then you can go and rinse them again. But these I have already pre-washed. So I'm not taking the core out, because really, this is a very tender vegetable. So it doesn't take a lot of cooking. So we're going to leave it in halves, like this. And then what are we going to flavor this with? Well, let me show you. In this beautiful little brown bag, I have something that is very dear to northern Italians. And it's, I've wrapped it well because I don't want it to, to dry out. But let me show you what it is. I told you it was well wrapped. OK. You admire that. Isn't that beautiful? This is something called speck, or if you were in the Sud Tyrol of northern Italy, the northernmost part of Italy, you would call this Speck because it's a very German part of Italy. And what this is, is a dry, cured, and lightly smoked ham. So when you describe this ham, you often say, a little salt, a little thyme, a little smoke gives you Speck. And there are spices that go in to curing this ham. Usually they're juniper, rosemary, laurel. But every producer has their own mix of spices, so it's kind of a little secret. So we're going to use this speck, or speck, to flavor the bok choy. So this is where the east meets the west. All right, so I'm going to cut off. You want about a quarter of a pound. So I'm gonna, I've got this in a chunk because I want to dice this up. And you don't want to take off that fat because that is part of this ham. So you want to cut it with a good knife into slices. And the first time I had this, I had it as an antipasto, where you just eat very thin slices of it with cheeses that come from the same area with pickles, with a really dense bread, like a rye bread or a, a buckwheat bread, something like that. So we want to dice it up, because this is going to flavor our bok choy. And this idea came to me one day when I just happened to have speck in the refrigerator. And you can buy it. It is, it is available in the States. So look for it in an Italian grocery store. All right, that looks good. And I want to get the rest of this and also that fat. OK, now that we have this cut up, we want to put this into a little bit of olive oil. So there it is. Take and just put it in this bowl. And it's ready to go. All right, so let's, let's put in a little oil here. So we have a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in a pan. Not too much, about a tablespoon, because you've got fat in the speck. And we're going to heat that up and get this crispy, because the speck, or speck, is going to act like 
the croutons on top of the bok choy. So let's get it in. Give it a little swirl and let it go. We'll come back to that. Now, while that's cooking, let's talk about what else we need. So we're going to put this aside. And the other Italian ingredient that goes into the East meets West is Asiago. Yes, another wonderful cheese, an Italian cheese that comes from, well, it comes from the Veneto, actually, another region. And the Veneto has the little town of Asiago where this cheese comes from. So that's the name, Asiago. And this is a cow's milk cheese, you see? And it has tiny little holes. And depending on how long it's aged, will give you a different texture and taste. This is Mezzano. So this has been aged for between four and eight months. And it's perfect for this recipe because I want this cheese to melt. So when you buy it, you bring it home. And you only buy as much as you're going to use in a short period of time. But when you're not using it, you want to keep it in a cheese bag. This is a cheese bag. And it's waxed on the inside. So you want to put the cheese in the bag, fold over the paper, and put it in the refrigerator. And that will keep the cheese fresh for a long time. So we're going to cut off some of this cheese. And it's always best to grate this at room temperature. Take off that rind. Okay, and now we're going to grate this. We put it on a piece of wax paper. And just with a hand grater, grate it. See, it grates much easier if you do this when the cheese is at room temperature. So you can do as much as you want. I think uh, if you grate like a quarter of a pound, that should be plenty. And if you have more cheese than you need for the top of the bok choy, well, then you can always just eat it. Oh, it's delicious. Nice, mild taste. All right, that's enough. So let's put that off to the side. And check on the speck. OK, so you see why you don't want a lot of oil, because you've got the fat of the speck. So turn down your heat as you're cooking it. You really just want this to get crispy. So it needs about a couple more minutes, and then we can take it out of the pan. Now we're going to use some fresh garlic in that oil that we flavored the speck in. So you just want to slice up a couple cloves of garlic. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a couple cloves. But make sure you're always using fresh garlic. You don't want to use stuff in a jar because that stuff is just really, really potent. So now we can put the garlic into our oil. And we want to turn up the heat now just to get that garlic colored a little bit. We don't want to really burn it. But here's a little trick for you about when you're cooking garlic. You see how I just have it in the pan and the oil is around it. But if you tilt that pan, if you just tilt that pan over the flame and allow the garlic to be submerged in the oil, it'll cook a lot faster. So you can do this or you can just wait until it is uh, softened by just leaving the oil around the entire surface of the pan. But if you just lift it up like that, you'll have more control of not burning it. Here's our bok choy, and we're putting it cut side down into our pan. And that pan is really sizzling. So get them in, cut side down. And now I want to give this just a little salt. Not too much, because the speck has salt. So we want to control the amount of salt. So now we just want to let this cook until I can easily insert a small knife into the thickest part of the bok choy. So I'm going to cover this and let it cook oh, for about five minutes. So here's how I check. You take a little knife and you stick it right in the, right in the end part of that bok choy. And you see how easy it goes in. So that means I can do the flip. All right, so we want to turn these over. 
want to turn them over now because look they have a nice color on them see that you know sometimes i add a little soy sauce to this if i want to really keep it on the asian side now we can add the cheese so here is our wonderful asiago remember i told you it's a very good melting cheese this cheese that comes from asiago in the veneto cow's milk cheese so you sprinkle it right over the top of the bok choy as much as you want if you grate it of course it's going to melt very quickly now we cover this and we just allow that cheese to melt and while that's melting we're going to make vignarola so what exactly is vignarola well it is a roman dish usually made in the springtime when lots of spring vegetables are available one of the key things to it though are carciofi which are artichokes but here are some of the other things that go into it you've got to flavor some oil with pancetta then you have some spring onions, or you could use scallions, you could use shallots, whatever you want, or just a regular onion. You've got either artichoke hearts that are frozen, or you could work with fresh. We've got peas, we've got lettuce, and I'm going to add some lima beans. Usually fava beans would be more appropriate, but you know what, they're out of season. So we'll add lima beans just kind of to approximate the fava beans. So let's start with putting the pancetta in a pan and flavoring it with a little bit of olive oil. So pancetta, you know, is unsmoked Italian bacon. Here it is diced. You can fry that in your grocery store. So we diced it up. It's about a quarter of a pound. So I'm going to put it in a frying pan with a little bit of oil. Get that going over some medium heat. So let's put that in and we'll just watch that. So while that's cooking, let me talk to you about the vegetables. So first of all, if you're ever in Rome, you cannot eat anything if you don't eat an artichoke because artichokes are synonymous with Rome. It is one of the favorite, favorite vegetables. So for this dish, you really want to use baby artichokes. See this one? This came out of my garden. So you need like eight baby artichokes. So if you were using whole artichokes from the grocery store, big like this, they're going to be less tender, number one. And you see the difference. So one of these would be approximate about four of the baby artichokes. So it's up to you. But I'm going to use this one and this one and part of this one because my husband grew these. Can you believe it? These came out of my garden. Look how gorgeous they are. So what do you have to do with an artichoke? Well, if you have baby artichokes, like the ones you get in Rome, they are thornless, but we don't have that type here. We have what is called the globe artichoke. And most of the artichokes in the United States come from Castorville in California. That's the artichoke capital of the United States. So it's a very different variety. So it's not thornless and it's not, it is not chokeless. So when I get them out of the garden, I trim those little thorns off, see, just around the edges. A lot of people just take these leaves off and throw them away, but they're good to eat, so don't do that. I might take the outer, first outer layer away, but other than that, you want the whole thing. And also the stem, which in Italian is called the gambo. The gambo is good, so all you really want to do is take the outer part of that off and then you have this nice really tender tender part so I have to go back and see what's happening here with my sizzle and that's looking good I'm gonna have to move that around a little bit okay now I'm gonna put that on low because now we have to add some onions to that so before I continue with the artichokes let me get my spring onions going. So here we have some spring onions. You just want to take off the end like that. And this is a very mild onion. So as little or as much as you like. And that looks to be about enough. They go right in the pot. 
with the pancetta. Okay, now that we have the onions in, I'm gonna move that aside and work on the artichokes. I did tell you that Roman artichokes are chokeless. So what they do with them in a dish like this is simply slice them thinly, see, crosswise. You slice the artichoke down. This one is from my garden, as I said. You put them in some lemon water, and that's to prevent them from turning brown. However, if you didn't have that, well then, you went to the grocery store and you got artichoke, the globe artichoke. You snipped off the edges like I'm doing here, just to get those thorns off. And really, when you buy artichokes like this, you see how tight that is? They're not open at all, like a big flower. Well, actually, an artichoke is a flower, but you don't want the leaves to be fanned out when you buy them, because that's an old artichoke. When an artichoke starts to fan out like that, it's going to become a thistle because it's in the thistle family. So it becomes a, a purple flower, really. So once you take off the, the ends here, then I cut down, I know it's a little messy, I cut down the top, get rid of that. Again, peel that base, the gambo, take off a little bit of that because that's very tender. And then if you've got to get that choke out, you really got to rub them around on your cutting board a little bit. You see, you hear that squeaky noise? That tells you that that's a really fresh artichoke. So you got to go around your board like that and then you got to open it up. And in there is the choke. And that you have to get out. So now you have to be like an archaeologist. So you go in there, and I like to use a, a melon ball or, or get a, a grapefruit spoon, something that has a little bit of an edge to it. You can pull out those light colored leaves and get right down there to the hairy choke part. So this is gonna take a couple minutes to do, but there are options, remember? I told you, you can do frozen artichoke hearts, and you're probably saying, well, I don't know why the heck she's not doing that. But I like to use the fresh. Okay, I think you get the idea. So, you, again, would cut across the artichoke. Now, this is all gonna get mixed together. All of these vegetables are gonna be mixed together. And the name Vignarola comes from the fact that in Italy, you don't waste any land at all. None whatsoever. It's all used for growing something, crops, whatever it is. And so the Italians would actually plant vegetables in the vineyard around the vines. And that became the name of this dish, vignarola, from vigna, meaning vineyard. So the dish takes its name from the fact that these vegetables, or others like them, were planted around grapevines. All right, get the rest of that. So I'm gonna chop this one up now. Got that choke out. Thin slices if you can. Cut up that stem too, cause that's all good. And you let that sit in the water for a while. About 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, we can put that in the pan with the pancetta. Mix them around a little bit just to flavor them a little bit. And now we're going to add a little chicken broth. About a half a cup. We're gonna put the cover on and allow this to cook over oh, about 10 minutes, just until the artichokes are tender. So here we have some romaine lettuce. And you know, this is a good recipe to use when you have lettuce that's kind of like going a little bit, that's limp, you don't know what to do with it. It's great in this dish, because we're gonna cook it. So what you wanna do is just shred up some of those lettuce leaves, see? Just like that. And this is gonna go in last, because of course this isn't gonna take very long to cook at all. So there's our lettuce, so now we can put in the limas and or fava, if you have them. It would be much more traditional with fava, of course. Here they go. They're in. You want to mix those around. Now you can begin to see how we're building this dish, cooking the vegetable that takes the most time first and the vegetable that takes the least time last. So in they go. That's going to cook for about 
two or three minutes. So in goes the lettuce, the peas. You want to mix all of this around. Look at how, I mean, is this healthy or what? This is a really wonderful spring dish. And if you find that your pan is a little dry, you could add a little bit more chicken broth. You could add water if you wanted to. So I'm gonna let that wilt down just for a couple minutes. Then I'm gonna give it some salt, pepper, and later on a little bit of mint. So beautiful. Here it is. A beautiful spring Roman dish with all these wonderful vegetables. Remember we have the peas, the lettuce, the artichoke hearts, the lima beans slash fava beans when they're in season. And it just makes a really nice side dish. Or if you really want to be super creative, you can also use this as a sauce for pasta. Why not? But this would go with chicken, with pork, beef. Look at this, all healthy stuff. I gave it a little bit of salt and pepper. So that looks great. And then I just like to dress it up a little bit with some mint. So another spring herb. So we're thinking spring here. So a little mint and vignerola is ready. So there you have it. How to cook a wonderful bunch of vegetables that are springtime, delicious, and very Italian. Look what you can do with some ordinary vegetables. You can make them elegant. And today we started with bok choy. And I did a recipe for you called East Meets West because we took an oriental vegetable, we combined it with some Asiago cheese and some speck and created this very delicious side dish, East Meets West. And then we made a springtime vegetable side dish from Rome called Vignarola. Remember, that had artichokes and fava beans if you can get them, but we used lima beans, peas, and lettuce. So until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao. So I'm on my way to Monarola, but I really think this is such a mad majestic view that you should take it all in. I'm going to go for a ride in my boat. All along this avenue, this via, are these boats all lined up as if somebody had parked their car. <laughs> Let me give you a tip. You want to bring something home from the regions and the towns that you visit? Don't buy trinkets. Buy spices. These are typical of the ones you'll find. Here's some rosemary. Now, I, I prefer to use fresh herbs, but I'm showing you that these are some of the herbs that you find in Liguria. They particularly like marjorana. Marjorana is used in sauces. Um, you've got thyme, timo. You've got salvia, which is sage. What else do we have here? More salvia. And then you have spices in a package. These are always fun to bring home to people. This is for if you want to make a sauce for a, a very uh, flavorful and kind of uh, hot spaghetti. So you would add these dried hot red pepper flakes. There's some nice looking spices here. So you remember, you have to remember that of course Genoa, we're very close to Genoa, was a major port, one of the four maritime ports of Italy. And of course, spice trade came through there, so this makes a lot of sense. Thank <laughs> you.